Lovely, so let's get started. I'm just going to bring up my PowerPoint. Oops, that's not what we want. Now, also, if at any point um, you lose me or you can't hear me, please just let me know. I will also record this, um, just if um, anyone that wasn't able to attend um, will be able to hear it. Sorry, just bear with me one minute and I'm just going to make sure it's recording. Fantastic. Now, can everyone see my screen there? Wonderful. All right, so welcome to Skincare RX. So as we know, our Skincare RX range, I'm sorry, I'll just go back to that page. Um, Skincare RX is an Australian brand, um, so made and formulated in Australia. It is paraben free, sulfate free and fragrance free. Throughout the range, we use a lot of ingredients like our peptides, our plant stem cells, antioxidants, AHAs, BHAs, brightness, hydrators, and of course, sunscreen, which is very important. So in uh, the manual, this is some excerpts from our um, manual that we do have. So all of you should have a manual um, on site with you um, in your salons and clinics. Please let me know if you don't, um, and we can definitely get one out to you. Just because it's a really good guide to sort of go back to um, and recap on your notes. Um, or if you've got you know, anything you're unsure of in terms of ingredients and things, then that, this is really good to refer back to. Um, so today we're going to be looking through the skin, the ingredients, and the home care range, as I mentioned. So a little bit about Skincare RX. Skincare RX is more what we call a, a dermaceutical or a cosmeceutical. Um, so it's skincare, a skincare prescription of complex formulas with simple regimes to target all mechanisms of skin health. Skin KRX Dermafix is formulated with a supreme combination of scientifically proven ingredients at optimal concentrations for the utmost health and management of the skin. Um, as mentioned, it's paraben free, sulfate free and fragrance free. So a really good um, selling point for your clients as they really look for those sorts of products um, nowadays. So we'll talk a little bit about the skin. Um, skin is affected by obviously a, a number of things. So things like genetics, lifestyle choices and environment. Um, so sun exposure, things like smoking, alcohol, um, and obviously our, our genetics, what we're born with as well. It's important for skincare professionals to understand the functions and ingredients of the skin in order to give a, a proper treatment plan and to treat your client's concerns. So we will dive a little bit into the structure of the skin. I know you'll all be fairly familiar with the layers of the skin, um, what they do and how it all works. But as beauty therapists, it's really important to, you know, recap on this regularly. Um, when we're doing sort of skin analysis, it's not only important to look at what's going on on the skin surface, but to bear in mind and, and keep in mind, you know, what's going on under that surface. Um, you know, looking at what we're trying to treat, what we're trying to um, stimulate in the skin, what we're trying to calm down, you know, and that all happens underneath the surface. So really important to you know, keep in mind what's going on under the, the superficial layer of the skin. So as we know, our basic skin structures and functions, um, main functions of the skin are protection. So it's protecting us, uh, protecting our internal organs and everything that we've got inside. Um, it's aiding in uh, regulating and controlling our temperature. So obviously if we're too hot, that's when we perspire and we sweat um, to release some of the heat out of the body. 
Whereas if we're cold, um, that's where, you know, we'll get that goosebump appearance in the skin. So what's happening there is our erector pili muscle, which is at, um, attached to our hair, then contracts, causes our hairs to stand up on end and therefore block, um, you know, the loss of heat um, from out of the body. Also within the skin, um, it's protecting us from, uh, sorry, it has sensation. So our nerve endings and our nerve receptors that do protect us. Um, also, we've got excretion and secretion. So um, pers perspiration through our sweat glands and also sebaceous um, activity with our sebum, which aids in um, our barrier function with our acid mantle layer. So again, very, very important. Uh, there's also absorption. Um, so our skin is really designed to keep everything out, um, keep anything harmful, any nasties out of the skin. But there is also the ability for absorption to occur uh, through those superficial layers of the skin. So those are the main sort of functions um, of our skin. The main one is, yeah, definitely protection, um, protection, protection, protection is what it's there for. So it's protecting our organs, veins, arteries. It also prevents bacteria or viruses from penetrating into the skin. Um, as we know, it protects us from UV light, but temperature, as we've talked about. Um, yeah, it's just really an incredible structure. And it's amazing to think that our, you know, the thickness of our skin is generally, mostly speaking, around sort of two millimetres, so very, very fine. Um, but you know, it has an incredible job for what it does. So let's look now uh, into the layers of the epidermis. So this is definitely, um, you know, one of the main parts that we will work with in the skin when doing our facial treatments. Um, <clears throat> so our first top layer, um, as you can see there really nicely, the different layers of the skin. Um, we can see too in the basal layer, you know, right down the bottom there, we've got some really nice, big, thick, juicy, um, you know, decent shaped cells with the little purple nucleus inside. And as we look up to the top um, layer of the skin in our stratum cornea, we can see that the shape has really changed. They've really flattened out and they've lost that nucleus. So they've become dead cells. So let's break it down a little bit into the different layers of the skin. So starting at the top with our stratum corneum, this is our dead skin, our dead cells, sorry. Um, there's no nucleus, basically they're just keratin filled cells and um, they're glued really tightly together with a glue like substance that holds them uh, really tightly. In amongst the cells and between the cells, um, there's enzymes and these enzymes will naturally desquamate or exfoliate um, and, and in a healthy hydrated skin, they will, um, the enzymes will naturally eat away at that glue like substance. Um, that, that binds those cells together and naturally peel them off, um, peel off the dead skin cells. And that's where we get that cellular turnover occurring. So when those dead skin cells slough off, slough off the top, we get new healthy cells um, start starting to be reformed back down in the basal layer. And that pushes everything up and, and that process continues to occur. So generally in healthy skin, um, sort of under 25, uh, under yeah, under 25, under 30, we're looking at around sort of a 25 to 30 day um, cycle for that um, cellular turnover. Whereas when we get over 30, um, and we get up into our 40s and 50s, that process really slows down and can be up to sort of 50 days. Um, so that's where skin care, um, exfoliation, uh, proper care of the skin is really important um, to help in this process of healthy skin. Uh, as the cell, cells start to flatten out and the nucleus starts to die off, it sends out a message back down to the basal layer in the form of growth factors to stimulate new cells to be born. So within the stratum corneum um, is one of the most important layers um, that we don't really talk a lot about. Generally, we'll know the name um, of the acid mantle layer, but it's not something that um, at training schools we're taught about as much as we're taught about um, 
the other layers of the skin. Whereas the acid mantle is probably one of the most important, crucial parts of our skin um, and really important to keep it in, intact and keep it um, you know, strong and protected for our skin's uh, protect, protection. So the acid mantle layer sort of sits at the bottom of the stratum corneum and it's more of our second line of defense. So our stratum corneum, as I say, is really tightly packed. Um, and aids in sort of preventing anything from being able to get through that really tight packed, um, you know, structure of cells there. If anything does happen to get through there, then it hits our acid mantle layer, which is our skin line of defense. Um, so, you know, it, it's very hard for any, um, you know, foreign invaders or anything to get into the skin. And that's where that protection, as we talked about earlier, comes in. So our acid mantle is made up of mainly oil and sweat, about 80% oil and sweat. Um, and one of the really neat ways to think of, of an acid mantle layer, just to put a picture in your head, is to think of it like glad wrap. So as we know, with our bowl of takeaway food, um, you know, we, we pop glad wrap over it to keep it in the fridge, and that's to keep it fresh, um, to prevent anything nasty from getting into it, um, you know, as a layer of protection for our food, basically. So with that Glad Wrap, um, if we left it in the fridge overnight, got up to uh, get our bowl of food out in the morning, one of the things that we would notice is sort of little water droplets just sitting underneath that layer of um, the Glad Wrap there. And what that sort of symbolises in the skin is that it's working to prevent that transepidermal water loss, which is really important in the skin. Um, also as well, if we think of, um, say for instance, we've, we've poked a few holes into the glad wrap, so um, therefore our barrier, if we're thinking again of our skin, is a little bit impaired, you know, there's some gaps and some cracks happening in there. So there's a few things that we generally notice um, with our bowl of food, um, if there are holes poked in it. One of the first things we'll see is that the, the coloration of the food will start to change. Um, you know, if there's meat in there, it will start to go a bit grey and, um, you know, not look so fresh and vibrant. And this is like our skin. When there's those gaps and cracks in that acid mantle layer, we generally start to see a little bit of redness appearing in the skin. So that colour changing in the skin. Um, irritation and things can come from that as well. Um, also, another thing we see with those holes in the glad wrap is that the food directly under those holes uh, begins to dry out. So in turn, like our skin, uh, where those gaps and cracks are, we tend to get dry patches of skin. And the third thing we can often see with our bowl of food is that mould will start to grow. Um, and that symbolises bacteria that can form on the skin underneath those holes. Things like acne uh, will start to appear. So even in an acneic skin, it's really vital to you know, keep that structure of the um, acid mantle layer intact. And a lot of people with an acne skin, especially if they're oily, you know, will use cleansers and things that, um, you know, will strip away the skin because they like that really clean feeling. But what that's actually doing is, you know, stripping away that acid mantle because remember 80% of it is made up of oil and sweat. So they're stripping that away um, and therefore they're more prone to bacteria um, and acne forming on the skin. So you're really important to even tell those clients, um, you know, explain to them the importance of not stripping the skin back. So our barrier is really, really important and needs to be um, our, our first line of treatment, basically, for any skin type, especially when we're wanting to do a course of treatments like skin peels or microdermabrasions, anything like that. Um, you know, we first need to um, ensure that our skin's barrier is, you know, at optimal level, it's functioning at 100%. It's you know really really strong, um, and that our hydration in our skin, um, you know, is really up there as well. We need to you know really plump up the hydration. So when a client comes into the salon, um, they you know they're looking at getting some skincare. They're wanting to do a range of um, a course of treatments. Number one thing to do is to get them on something that's going to hydrate their skin, um, Hydrofix in, in this case, or even our new um, HA clinical complex, do a treatment or an infusion on the skin with that. 
um, get their skin hydrated, get their barrier function um, you know, absolutely perfect. Once they're both intact, you can then look at treating the skin problems, treating the acne, treating the pigmentation, um, you know, treating the issues in the skin. So it's really important to do that, um, especially if you're doing peels. And another explanation um, that's really good to think of is if you think of a glass of water, um, a full glass of water, which symbolizes a you know, fully hydrated skin, a really hydrated skin. If we were to drop um, two drops of red food coloring in the water um, and swirl it around, you know, we'd get a nice sort of light pinky color appearing in the water. So that means, you know, if we think of our food coloring as like our, our peel, we're, we're putting that on our really hydrated skin. So it's nice and diluted, you know, it's going to do a great job. Um, it's diluted really nicely and evenly into that hydrated skin. Whereas if we had a skin um, that was really dehydrated, so we had more like a quarter of a glass of water and we dropped those, those two uh, drops of red food coloring in there, we'd be left with a really dark red um, glass of water. So think of that like if our skin's, you know, it's got less water, so it's less hydrated, any peels or anything we put on the skin are going to feel really strong. Um, they're going to irritate, they're going to feel uncomfortable, you know, they're just not going to give the desired result that we're after. And that's why it's really important to get that hydration up in the skin before doing anything advanced like that. Um, if sub substances are applied to the skin to treat a condition that are active, like our acids and things, the skin really needs to be hydrated to prevent that irritation and to ensure that all chemical reactions occur um, properly. So things like our enzymes, um, you know, they'll function better in a hydrated skin. So like we talked about those natural enzymes that sit between um, the cells in the stratum corneum, if our skin's really nicely hydrated, they will naturally work to desquamate and eat away at that glue and cause that um, exfoliation and that, that falling off of those top layers um, of the skin cells there in the stratum corneum. Um, also hydration means the area between the cells is full, so the intercellular um, communication can occur um, and that's really vital because within our cellular communication um, we get um, you know, the expulsion of waste, we get receiving of nutrients between the cells, um, it works better in a hydrated state, it flows more easily in a hydrated state. So let's just talk a little bit um, about hydration while we're on that topic. Um, so hydration comes from HA or hyaluronic acid. Um, and hyaluronic acid is naturally in the skin. When we're born, um, you know, we're born with really high levels of, of HA or hyaluronic acid, acid in the skin. So when you look at a baby, um, you know, their skin looks really lovely and plump, um, you know, really gorgeous. And that's because they've got that, that high level of um, hyaluronic acid sitting in the skin there. It's like a jelly-like substance that swells with water. So it has the capability of holding 1,000 times its own weight in water, which is just amazing. Um, all spaces between the cells um, get full when our skin is nicely hydrated. Our skin will look full, it will look plump. Um, it gives structure and shape to our skin as well. Um, also, we talked a little bit about that cell communication. So things like vitamin C, um, alpha lipoic acid, um, etc., can move, you know, really easily in that watery state rather than in a really dry state. Um, you know, think about swimming in the water. It's very you know, easy to, to swim around when you're in water, whereas if you're lying on the sand, you don't really go anywhere. It's, you know, it's very tricky. So similar, similar to that hydration in the skin. Um, our cell movement, our turnover is improved. Um, so yeah, all in all, hydration is, you know, is definitely important. And like I say, it's our kind of number one go-to um, in terms of treating a client's skin um, before doing anything else. So one of the things we can often find in um, a range of other skincare um, products and skincare ranges on the market, especially if you're getting clients that are, you know, purchasing things from the supermarket or um, online or anything like that. Not a, you know, not a high level of um, skin.
skincare basically, will generally find it will contain things like alcohol or astringent factors, um, products that will really strip oil from the skin, like we talked about before um, with that acneic skin, um, you know, liking those products that really strip the skin. Um, remember, as I said, that our acid mental is made up of that 80% of oil and sweat, so it instantly will break down that barrier. Um, our skin will become dry, it will be dehydrated, it will be more prone to infection, more prone to the acne and bacteria forming on the skin. So when we think of our skin, it is, um, sits around a pH of about generally 5.5 to 6, which can vary, um, you know, due to a number of factors like our environment, um, if we're in a humid environment, uh, what the water is like in our area, uh, what our diet's like, um, our culture, everything like that, um, you know, can, can affect um, our acid mental layer, but generally it will sit within that range of 5.5 to 6. Um, <clears throat> whereas our acid mental pH is around 3 to 3.5, so very, very acidic. Um, and if we think about it, nearly all bacteria is alkaline. So if bacteria lands on a healthy acid mental layer, which is acidic, remember, um, it just can't, it can't live there, it can't thrive there because, um, because it's so alkaline, it, it just can't sit in an acid um, state on the skin. Um, so, so that's if, it, you know, if that bacteria is able to get through that stratum corneum um, to the acid mental layer, um, you know, that's where it's really vital to have a, a good healthy acid mental as that second line of defense. Now, please let me know if um, you guys have any questions as of yet, if I'm going too fast, um, if there's anything um, so far that you want to talk about, um, please just write your questions into the chat box. Oh, my chat box has just disappeared, so let me just go in and check that. Okay, cool, so we'll carry on. So we've covered a bit about um, the stratum corneum. Let's move now um, to our other layers of our skin. We spend a lot more time talking about the stratum corneum um, because, you know, that's our superficial layer. That's where a lot goes on. That's, you know, um, aiding in that protection. It's a very, very important layer of the skin. Um, next underneath that we have our lucidium, which is our really, really thin layer. Now the name lucidium comes from the word lucid, which means clear. So this layer is a really clear um, layer. It's mainly flattened cells that are on their deathbed, um, you know, ready to go up to the, cor uh, the corneum layer where they die off completely. Um, it can vary uh, from skin to skin. Um, some skins it can be a little bit thicker, some it can be much thinner, so a really light, you know, light, light skin, really white skin tone um, will have a much thinner layer, whereas a, a darker skin tone will have a thicker, um, looser than layer. So it's usually around sort of three, three to four cells thick um, in this layer. Underneath that we have our um, stratum granulosum, which is generally about five cells thick. Um, and as you can see in the diagram there, um, they're distinct keratin-shaped cells. So cells that start to separate, uh, they begin to change shape. Um, we also can find Lang Langerhans cells um, starting to appear in this level. So that's our sort of immune system um, that's present in this area. Um, we also get the movement of, of nutrition and waste between cells um, and through here. So this layer sits at about 0.2 millimetres, um, which is really neat to know in terms of when you're doing your needling treatments. Um, if you're using a 0.2 needle, uh, which is in your home care roller that your clients can use, this is the level that they're getting into, which is our granulosum layer. Um, after that, we have our spinosum, or our uh, stratum spinosum. Um, the name spinosum comes from um, the spikiness of the cells. So these cells are quite spiky in, in shape. 
um, generally around eight to 10 cells thick. So definitely a more um, significant layer in the skin. And this is where most of the UV light um, you know, can, can penetrate down to, as into our spinosum layer. So if you're a sunbather, you know, if you're out in the sun a lot, um, no matter what colour your skin is, uh, whether you're really fair or you're dark, um, that UV will penetrate down to the spinosum layer. And this sits around the 0.3 millimetres. Um, so again, for your needling, if you're wanting to start targeting um, any form of pigmentation, um, you know, that's sort of the level you, you first need to start getting down to. Um, after that, we have our basal layer, which is our new cells that are generated by those growth factors. So remember, as I talked about, um, as the cells begin to die off, they send that message back down to the basal layer in the form of those growth factors um, to stimulate new cells. So the growth factors can be... Um, for creating new keratinocytes, uh, for melanocytes, uh, you know, a range of different cells um, that those growth factors will come down and send messages to. So they stimulate cells to reproduce and to separate. And what happens when that occurs is they begin to push the cells above it up, which creates that chain reaction. Um, so you know the cells above that move up, they go into the spinosum, up into the granulosum, lucidium, and then they begin to shed off. So it's that um, you know, chain reaction, basically, which, as we said, can take around sort of 30 to 50 days in a healthy skin. Um, <clears throat> stimulating cell turnover, uh, products with growth factors will help to stimulate um, the reproduction, but it's very hard to get um, growth factor uh, products with growth factors down into that layer. Um, so other ways we can aid in um, increasing this, the speed of the cellular turnover for healthier skin is by damaging it. Um, so when we damage our skin, it tricks the brain. Um, the brain freaks out and thinks, oh my gosh, what's going on? And you know, sends everything in there to um, repair that. So it starts creating a lot more cells in the basal layer to quickly push everything up to reform that stratum corneum layer. Um, also, we can speed up this process by removing um, the, the surface, so the stratum corneum layer. Um, again, the brain goes into panic mode. Um, it, you know, it, it realizes all the protection's gone, so it's you know quickly producing those cells um, really fast to, to push them up into that layer, um, and everything moves up really fast. And the skin, the cells will continue to do this until that stratum corneum is repaired. And this um, occurs with treatments like our skin peels, um, our microgen abrasion. You know, that's what they're working to do is remove that um, superficial layer there um, to get that healthy cell turnover to speed up and, and in turn get that healthy skin. Okay, so that's sort of a rundown through um, the different layers of the epidermis. <clears throat> Next, we know we look into, oh, sorry, this page is just talking a little bit about the cell turnover, but we've covered that already. Um, next, we look into the dermis, so which sits underneath um, the epidermis, as we know. Um, the dermis has a couple of layers as well. Our first layer is our papillary layer, which is very fine, um, it has, sorry, which has a very fine network of capillaries that sit just underneath it. Now, in terms of, um, again, if we're needling, in terms of depth of our um, dermis, if we're wanting to get into the dermal layer, we need to be working with a 0.5 millimeter roller. That's what's going to get into that. Um, you know, layer of the skin. And when I talk about the really fine capillaries, um, obviously that's our, where our blood network starts to sit. And you can see in this um, diagram here um, is that where that papillary layer is um, just under through here, you can see we've got some of this blood network um, sitting in under this area here. So think about it like when you get a paper cut, Sometimes you'll bleed with a paper cut and sometimes you won't. If you don't, obviously you haven't penetrated um, or cut down into that um, papillary layer. Whereas if you do get blood, then you know you've gone that deep in the skin. But remember, you know, it's only 0.5 of a millimetre, so it's still very, very um, shallow in terms of the thickness of the skin. 
Um, this is also where a lot of our collagen and elastin is made and our skin scaffolding, um, you know, which sits there and provides um, that firmness for our skin. Underneath that, we've got our reticular layer, which um, is a bit thicker and a bit stronger. There's a lot more vascular activity, more collagen. So we generally see our um, collagen type one in this area, which gives that strength um, to the skin. It's also um, where most of the weight in our skin comes from. So about 70% of the weight of our skin is from, our, uh, is from that, um, which is quite interesting um, to know. And then underneath that, we have the hypodermis subcutaneous, which is our um, adipose tissue for our fat cells. So if we were um, looking to needle or to treat um, anything like stretch marks or um, deep scars, we would need to be getting into this, to this area of the skin. And that's where we're looking at more of a three millimetre. Um, so reticular is, reticular layer, sorry, I didn't say, is about one millimetre. Our hypodermis is about two millimetres and the subcutaneous sits there at about three millimetres in the skin. Okay, um, this diagram just gives you a little bit of a breakdown as well of what else we can find in the dermal layers. Um, so our appendages of the skin, we've got our equine sweat glands, um, our erector pillar muscles, so that's like I talked about before, you can just see over here, on the here, so this is the erector pillar that contracts and that's what causes that, um, you know, our hands to stand on and, and that heat to be locked and trapped into the skin to, to regulate our temperature for us. Uh, we've got our sebaceous oil glands, um, over here on the hair follicle. And we've got our hair follicle here and our root of our hair. And then over here we can see our um, nerve endings and our different um, structures of that in the skin. So within the dermis, um, there is a composition um, of cells. Um, in the side, excuse me. And the first one is our fibroblasts. Um, now, fibroblasts are really important um, in our skin. They are what aid in uh, stimulating the, the new growth of collagen and elastin. Um, but they're our construction workers, basically. Um, the body produces collagen and other proteins found in the extracellular matrix, matrix which is between the cells and spaces. Um, we've got our macrophages, macrophages, sorry, which are our key players in the immu immune response. So um, they you know, work on those foreign invaders of the body, such as in any infections, microorganisms, um, and they work to, um, to fight that. So they get that immune response in the skin. Um, we've also got our um, adipocytes, which are our fat cells, our connective tissue cells that um, become specialised with synthesis um, and they basically store fat um, in the skin. Um, oops, yeah. Also in our dermis, um, we've got our extracell extracellular matrix or our ECM as it's quite commonly referred to. So you'll probably hear this um, this we talked about, uh, but you may not know, you know, what the extracellular matrix is. So basically the extracellular matrix is made up of um, our collagen and our elastin and our glycosaminoglycans or our GAGs as we call it. Um, so looking at collagen, collagen is there obviously for our strength. Um, it's a structural protein. Um, majority of our collagen and elastin, sort of around 80 to 90% 80 of it, is our type 1 and type 3. Um, collagen is tough, it doesn't stretch easily, it provides strength to the skin and holds the skin together. Um, elastin, on the other hand, um, again is also a fibrous protein, um, but Differently to the collagen, elastin is very stretchy. It's very resilient. Resilient. It gives that elasticity to the skin or that snap and bounce back. So, you know, if we pinch our skin and we pinch our cheeks and we let go and release, you know, it gives that bounce back effect to the skin. And then we've got our glycosaminoglycans or our GAGs, which are our skin's natural moisturizers. 
So they are polysaccharides, which are um, a sugar linked with a protein, and together with water, they create a gel-like fluid. This fills the spaces between the collagen and elastin fibers. Um, it helps to draw water into the skin and keep the skin really hydrated, which as we know is very important. Um, it works to hold moisture, it helps to maintain the skin's structural integrity, um, it provides volume, elasticity and firmness in the skin. So that um, all together is our extracellular matrix, which we find in our dermal layer. Basic functions of the dermis, um, because the extracellular matrix is our su support system for the epidermis, it's crucial to keep it really healthy um, and functioning properly. If the structure is weakened and unable to provide that necessary support, um, that's where we'll get those outward signs of aging. So things like our wrinkles, our sagging of our skin, enlarged pores, loss of elasticity, and just that general loss of youthfulness in the skin. So we're going to talk now a little bit about um, some of the conditions that we will generally look at um, treating for our clients who come in um, for treatments. Uh, the first one is our pigmentation. So obviously pigmentation, um, living in New Zealand with our, um, you know, our sun and our hole in the ozone layer, we do see a lot of pigmentation with our clients. Um, and you know, there's different forms of pigmentation. Um, there's pigmentation by sun damage, um, there's you know, pigmentation by hormonal factors, so our melasma and chiasma. Um, very common to see this um, with pregnancy, things like that. Um, and we've also got our um, post-inflammatory pigmentation as well. Um, so really important to um, you know, know a lot about pigmentation, um, how it's formed, um, you know, how to treat it really. And we're not going to go too much into it today, but we can, um, again, spend a little bit more time um, going through pigmentation um, in another webinar, if you like. If, if there is anything that we go over today that you would like me to spend a bit more time on, um, please let me know, and I'll, I'll very happily organise um, another webinar session um, like this at, at any point. So, yeah, please open to feedback. I'm just send me an email or let me know and um, I can very easily arrange that. So with pigmentation, uh, when we're looking back at our uh, layers of our epidermis, um, <clears throat> in the sort of base um, on that sort of papillary junction um, is where our melanocytes um, are formed. So one in 10 of our cells um, are melanocytes. No matter what skin type or shade you are, so if you've got really, really fair skin and really, really dark skin, um, doesn't matter. You, you, you know, we all have the same amount of. Um, oh, I'm just going to do more research here. Are you able to please speak up? Yes, absolutely. Sorry, is it hard to hear me? Is that any better? I'll carry on with that, but please let me know if you can't hear me. Wonderful. I've just got my little um, headpiece microphone on, so I'm feeling a bit like Britney Spears today. <laughs> but yeah, please let me know if you can't hear me. Um, so yeah, one in 10 of our cells are melanocytes. No matter what um, skin type, no matter how fair or how dark we are, we all have the same amount of melanocytes in the skin. Um, with our melanocytes, they, they look sort of like octopus. So they have the, the octopus arms and legs, which we call our dendrites, um, that reach up into the stratum spinosum, which is, remember, where that UV is able to penetrate down to. I'm just going to go to the next slide here because it actually um, gives us a nice um, image of our melanocytes and our dendrites. So you can see at the bottom there, like I say, it's got those sort of dendrite or octopus um, legs um, that will stretch up through those cells. Um, so pigment is there as a form of protection. Um, so our cells um, you know, produce this pigmentation as a form of protection um, you know, from the harmful UV rays. Um, 
if we think of it, you know, if you go out in summertime um, and if you were wearing a black t-shirt as opposed to a white t-shirt, you know, the black will attract the heat a lot more. Same as if you were sitting um, in, a, in a black car, you know, it's going to get hotter faster as opposed to if you were sitting in a light car. Um, and why that happens is because um, the darker colour attracts the energy. So bear that in mind when we think about um, you know, why pigmentation forms on the skin when I say it's there for our protection. So the body creates pigment um, designed to, uh, when that UV um, energy is um, exposed on our skin, the pigmentation then jumps up and it creates that darkening of the skin so that the energy is then, um, you know, derived into the pigmentation rather than penetrating deep down into um, you know our organs, our heart, our blood work and everything that sits um, within the inside of our body. Um, so our body creates that pigment to absorb the harmful energy from um, penetrating any deeper into the skin. When we're older our melanocyte health does tend to decrease and therefore we tend to get more of a patchy um, coloration on the skin. So think back, um, you know, when you're younger, you know, you lay out in the sun um, and you get a nice even um, tanning or nice pigment, even pigment happening all over the skin. Um, whereas when we get older, we get that more motley, discolored, um, you know, not nice looking um, pigment that, that appears on the skin. And this is due to the health of the melanocyte to, to deposit that pigment evenly. So as we age, our melanocytes start to degenerate. Um, you know, they start to kind of, um, you know, just not be able to uh, share that pigment out evenly. And that's where we get that real mottled appearance of pigmentation on the skin. So the formation of um, pigment melanin. Uh, the production of melanin or melanogenesis, which you can see in this diagram here, is a complex chemical reaction. Uh, it's part of the skin's barrier defense system. Um, the formulation of pigmented melanin is dependent on UV exposure. So this is what sets off that chain reaction in the skin. Um, our pituitary gland produces um, a POMC, I'm not going to say the big name, <laughs> much of a tongue twister, which is a precursor to uh, the, the melanin stimulating hormone or MSH as we refer to here at Ford. Um, MSH adheres to the cell receptors and the keratinocytes or melanocytes. So when our skin is exposed to UV, it activates um, the tyrosinase, uh, tyrosinase enzyme. So if you can see um, just down the bottom to the right hand side here, if we imagine um, that, that our skin is exposed to UV uh, right now, what happens here um, is it activates this tyrosinase enzyme over here. What the tyrosinase enzyme does is it's a catalyst to the tyrosine, which is an amino acid. Um, so it accelerates and increases the amount of tyrosine um, in the skin. Tyrosine then, um, as you can see, the arrow goes up, it then converts into um, dopa, and then from there converts into dopamine, dopamine either way, I understand it. And then from there, we get our brown pigment granules um, that are formed in the melanocyte. So as you can see, as it's coming up, it's changed from dopa to dopamine, then it goes into melanin, <clears throat> and then we can see it's forming here uh, within our dendrite. So melanosomes are formed in the melanocyte, which is the, the big round cell down the bottom here. <clears throat> and they begin to um, mature. As they mature, they start to migrate up through those dendrite cells. As we can see, those little brown spots starting to make their way up um, and through to our keratinocytes up here, which are our nice healthy cells here. Uh, they're then transferred into those keratinite cells uh, by a process of cell engulfing. So the, the um, melanosomes penetrate into the keratinocyte and it then engulfs it. But basically, um, the process of it, um, a portion of the melanocyte uh, dendrite is pinched off at the keratinocyte so that the melanosome and the melanocyte in the cytoplasm 
are all incorporated into the keratinocytes. site. So you can see up here, um, these have now moved in through our keratinous sites and they're now part of our keratin, if that makes sense. Um, I know pigmentation formation is a little bit confusing. So yeah, once it's in those keratinous sites, that's when we start to see that pigmentation um, appearing on the skin surface. So in order to <clears throat> target and to treat and prevent, to prevent pigmentation, we want to be looking at a range of ingredients that are going to help to um, prevent this process from happening. Um, a lot of our main ingredients, um, and again another word you probably hear a lot um, in terms of talking about products and pigment products, is tyrosinase inhibitors. So remember down the bottom here, um, when we're exposed to that UV, that tyrosinase is um, switched on and then accelerates the tyrosine. So by having a product that has a tyrosinase inhibitor, we're basically crossing out um, this, this chemical reaction from even beginning. So we're therefore preventing that, the rest of that chain reaction from appearing and formulating that um, pigment and sitting in the skin. So we'll talk a little bit more when we get into um, our products what some of the oh, our ingredients, what some of the those tyrosinase uh, inhibitor ingredients are. But just remember this image and sort of what it's doing. There's different um, pigment prevention products that work by um, breaking down this chain reaction sort of at different stages. Um, so, you know, it's not just at the beginning, it, it can um, prevent it from happening right along that chain reaction to really prevent um, any of that pigmentation from appearing in the skin. All right, any questions about that? No? Okay, wonderful. So we'll go to our next um, condition that we will generally treat in the skin, um, which is acne. So with acne, um, testosterone, uh, the hormone testosterone, targets the skin and the sebaceous gland uh, where sebum is produced and it combines it with the enzyme 5A reductase to produce dihydrotestosterone, which stimulates the sebaceous gland to produce increased volumes of sebum. So we've got P. acnes and other bacteria that sit naturally on um, on the surface of the skin and within the follicles. And they produce bacterial enzymes. Uh, they move into the follicle openings and convert excessive production of cells. Sorry, and convert, um, I'm reading off the page, and convert sebum into free fatty acids. This irregulates the follicle lining. This uh, irritation causes excessive production of cells. When we get that excessive production of cells, we get that cellular debris, which then builds up and blocks the, the, the follicle and traps those P. acnes inside. Um, the P. acnes then, um, you know, a, a bacteria that's trapped inside uh, the blocked follicle, they then breed, they produce acne, they produce um, those infections that grow into um, causing that inflamed skin. That's where we get that red inflamed skin when we're getting um, acne or pustules appearing in the skin. <clears throat> Our macrophage cells that produce in inflammatory histamines um, cause more, um, the skin to become more red, puffy and painful. So again, that's where we get that real inflammation appearing in the skin due to that um, inflammatory histamine response from the macrophage. Uh, this cell causes more follicle blockage. Um, this then causes more follicle blockage and promotes um, more acne infection. So it's just a nasty chain reaction, basically. Um, and it goes around and around and just gets more and more inflamed in the skin. So what we want to do is, is help to work um, within this process, working on ingredients that are going to help um, reducing that bacteria. They're going to help preventing that blockage of the follicles, which is really important. Uh, you know, we want to get oxygen into those follicles and you know, have an opening so that we're not getting that blockage and that, that inflammation appearing in the skin. 
um, and that comes in with um, our, again our products and we'll talk about that when we look into um, some of our ingredients and some of our products as well. Right, um, I haven't put it on here, but obviously another big one that we look at treating is, is um, anti-aging. So there are a number of factors, um, you know, that do cause um, aging in the skin. And when we're going through the ingredients now, uh, we'll cover that probably more in, in through here. So let's look at our skincare X ingredients. So I'm not going to cover absolutely everything, but we will talk about some of the main um, products that we do find without the, throughout the skincare RX range. And then we'll go through um, some of the products. Um, and, and now that you know the ingredients a lot more, you'll sort of see why, why they are in those products and what sort of benefit they're going to be having on the skin. <coughs> so there's um, different sort of uh, ingredients that have basically different effects or different um, you know, benefits in the skin. Um, so first we've got our AHAs and our BHAs and enzymes. So things like our lactic acid, salicylic acid, um, bacillus cement, papaya extract and pineapple extract. So those are the ingredients that we use within this range um, to give that uh, sort of enzyme exfoliating renewal um, effect to the skin. We then have a range of antioxidants and anti-inflammatories, which are really vital uh, for skin health and skin protection again. So we've got our vitamin C, we've got our R, alpha lipoic acid, our vitamin A, which is our retinol, um, our tetranone, our nisidamide, which is our vitamin B3, pearl powder, and vitamin E. We've then got our peptides, um, which work on that anti-aging process. So we've got our Geraline, our Matrixyl 3000, Matrixyl Synth 6, our Glycan Booster Peptide, and our Tetra Peptide 5. And we will go through these a little bit more in depth in a minute. Um, we've also got stem cells, uh, plant stem cells in there. Uh, we've got our pigmentation inhibitors and brightness. So we've got Resveratrol. We've got Skin White MSH. We've got Kojic Acid, and we've got Fairberry. And then we've got our humectants, our lipids, and our emollients. Um, so these are to hydrate, moisturize, and protect the skin. So obviously hydrating, we're going to have hyaluronic acid. Um, we've got our panthenol, our vitamin B5, and we've got our shea butter within that uh, category. Alrighty. So the goal of skincare RX Dermafix ingredients are to prevent and repair the appearance of the skin and degeneration, maintain, protect, restore, and strengthen the appearance of healthy skin, um, working to reduce the effects of free radicals um, that form that inflammation in the skin, um, also working to brighten, unify skin tone and color, smooth skin texture, reduce pore size and clarity, the appearance of the skin and imperfections, uh, reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and improve overall tone of the skin. So an amazing range that works uh, you know, on all of those goals and factors for the skin. Um, the Dermafix or Skincare RX ingredients, um, the goals, um, we've got our plant stem cells, like We've talked about in the beginning, we've got our peptides, our antioxidants, our anti-inflammatories, our AHAs, BHAs, pigmentation inhibitors, skin brighteners, those humectants, emollients, lipids, and obviously our sunscreen, which is very, very important um, for protecting the skin. So let's look first at those um, sort of exfoliating ingredients that we have. Uh, so first here we've got our lactic acid. So lactic acid is an AHA, which is an alpha hydroxy acid. Um, and BHA beta hydroxy acid. So they work as cell renewal agents with anti-aging um, acne benefits against acne. Our lactic acid, um, which is our AHA, is derived from milk. It's working to hydrate and exfoliate the skin and reduce wrinkles, um, help with the appearance of pigmentation. So it's an exfoliator and it's very anti-aging. 
um, it's working to give the skin a more smoother, brighter, radiant, and less pigmented appearance. Next, we've got our salicylic acid. So salicylic acid is part of the BHA family, working to exfoliate, uh, prevent pore clogging, smoothing fine lines and wrinkles, stimulating that new growth um, of the cells and reduces inflammation. So already we can see that our BHAs are, are more um, targeted for our acneic skins, our really oily skin, um, because they do target that sort of anti-acne um, side a little bit better. So they're exfoliating, they're anti-acne. They will aid in um, anti-aging as well and regenerating in the skin. So beautiful um, products, our AHAs and BHA ingredients. Um, again, they work to smooth, uh, to brighten, to give radiance and to uh, give a less pigmented appearance to the skin. Another one of our ingredients um, within this category is our bacillus ferment, which is derived from a probiotic extract. So it helps to loosen um, those cell cohesions. Um, or that, that um, intercellular glue that holds those dead skin cells really tightly together. It's stimulating the digestion of keratin proteins in the epidermis. Um, it's very gentle, a very gentle exfoliator, and um, again has that anti-acne um, benefit, and it's anti-aging and a regenerator as well. Um, so it's some really nice studies, you can see at the bottom of the page there, um, from a 28-day period, um, appearance of the skin improved by 19%, hydration um, 19%, appearance of lines and wrinkles by 62%, which is fantastic, a decrease of the appearance of pore size by 48%, which is great, again that's another uh, problem area for a lot of clients, um, and decreasing the appearance of redness by 33%. Next we have our papaya extract, um, and at the bottom there our pineapple extract. Um, so papaya extract again is really gentle, um, it gently exfoliates the skin, um, it's anti-acne, it's anti-aging, and it's a regenerator. It contains a um, powerful enzyme um, within it. Papaya, which is papaya, papaya is not the only exfoliant. Um, it penetrates the stratum corneum, which means it can facilitate the penetration of other active ingredients. Um, it's an antioxidant. It contains vitamin A, vitamin B, and vitamin C. So fantastic. We've then got our pineapple extract, which again exfoliates the skin. It's gentle. Um, it's anti-acne, anti-aging, regenerating again. Um, it's one of the most effective enzymes, and you'll generally find um, you know, pineapple is quite commonly used as an enzyme um, with an exfoliating ingredient, a uh, product, Becky Pattern. Um, with it, and its main ingredient is the bromelain in there. Um, its ability re to reduce inflammation of the skin is fantastic. It breaks down enzymes um, that cause that build up in the skin. So great for those um, clients with that acne that we talked about that we want to remove that build up and that clogging in the skin. Um, uh, excess surface cells, um, you know, are, are, are degenerated. Um, it's great for that non-abrasive exfoliation. So if you've got a client who's a little bit more um, on the sensitized side, they're prone to that real um, redness appearing in the skin, especially if you're using, um, you know, a granulated exfoliant, then something like this um, with that pineapple papaya in it is fantastic for them. Okay, next we've got our antioxidants. So I'm just going to take a minute to talk a little bit about um, antioxidants. Antioxidants, or antioxidants are again um, a really important ingredient in the skin. Um, they play a vital role and a lot of us do know, you know, we, we know antioxidants, we know the name of antioxidants, so quite often we forget, um, you know, what their role is in the skin. So antioxidants um, basically work to fight free radicals in the skin. 
Um, I'm just going to see if we can make more so much we need on this page. So this page also talks about anti-inflammatory ingredients, um, which we'll cover afterwards in our reactive oxygen species. So yeah, we'll come back to talk about that. So let's go to our, um, our free radicals. Um, antioxidants work to fight free radicals. And a free radical is a structure that's missing an electron. So if you think of it like um, a group of people, um, being ourselves, for instance. And what a free radical is, is would be like a person who's lost their arm. Um, so, you know, they can still function, but they, they struggle. They can't function at 100%. Um, you know, life becomes difficult for that cell. Uh, they can't do all that they used to be able to do and, and not at that optimal 100% level. So what they do um, is they go around looking for other cells or other people that they can pinch an arm from. Um, once they find one that, that looks like a good fit, they take it um, and, and it becomes theirs. And, and what happens there is, uh, you know, they look whole, but they're not really whole because the arm that they've pinched, um, you know, isn't a, isn't a perfect fit for them. They may function now at more like a 95% as opposed to 100. And the other thing that occurs is because they've now pinched their arm um, you know, off another person, then that person then becomes, you know, not functioning at 100%. And so they go to try and find someone else to pinch an arm for. And the process just continues. Um, and what happens there is that our cells um, are, are damaged and they're not all functioning at 100%. So they're not getting that optimal um, cell function in the skin, basically. Um, we get, we're exposed to free radicals by things like uh, UV exposure, um, by sitting in front of a computer screen all day, um, alcohol, smoking, stress, food, tiredness, a lot of factors will cause this uh, to occur in the skin. Um, so really important to be using those antioxidants. So what antioxidants will basically do is they will go around um, and rather than the, than, um, the people stealing an arm from each other, what the antioxidants will do is they will hand out a, a new arm, a better arm, um, an arm that causes them to function at 100%. Um, so it's really crucial and really vital to have those antioxidants on the skin. When we're young um, and we have that 30 day turnover um, within the skin, there's less, of, less time that our um, skin is exposed to that um, you know, those, that damage caused by sun exposure, caused by alcohol, stress, all those things I mentioned before. Um, whereas when we age, and remember as we age, um, that, that cellular turnover process uh, can take more up to 50 days. So that's when we're more exposed to that damage occurring in the, in the skin and those free radicals, um, you know, floating around, pinching um, electrons off of each other and, and not functioning at 100%. Um, so that's why as we age, you know, that's another factor that adds into that aging process and, and causes the skin, um, you know, to not look as good, to not feel as good, um, to not function as well, because we're more exposed, um, you know, to that for a longer period of time. That makes sense. Um, so when we have good hydration and our barrier is good, um, you know, this process is much better. Um, very important to use those antioxidants and antioxidant ingredients you know regularly especially on clients who are um, more concerned with anti-aging or who are sort of 30 plus that's where it's very important um antioxidants always work, also work to sort of uh, by wrapping around the cell as like a coat of armor that's one way that they work by protecting the cell so they give out those free radicals um, they work as, as like a coat of armor protecting around the cell um, they also can work more um, as protecting sort of from a distance um, so if you think of like a castle that has a moat around it um, that's sort of another way that it works in, in terms of, of protecting and then we also have our hunters which go out to find those free radicals and, and, and you know, give them out freely and ensure that every cell is functioning their cells completed 100% with, uh, you know, with nothing missing. It's really vital for the protection of our skin. So let's go ahead and look at um, some of our 
ingredients that um, have that antioxidant benefit in the skin. So the first one we're going to look at is our vitamin C. <coughs> Excuse me. So the form of vitamin C that we use in our skincare RX range is the form of sodium ascorbyl phosphate. So there are different um, types of vitamin Cs, uh, but sodium ascorbyl phosphate and also magnesium ascorbyl phosphate are the two, um, you know, higher quality, they last longer in the skin, um, you know, they're, they're stable forms of vitamin C. Um, so definitely the ones to choose in terms of um, you know, application on the skin and skincare ingredients. Um, so vitamin C in that form is a stable form of vitamin C. Um, it's an antioxidant. Um, it promotes collagen formation, brightens the skin, soothes and prevents inflammation. Um, it's a protectant, an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-aging, anti-acne, and it will brighten the skin. So you can see it's anti-anti-everything. Um, so a fantastic ingredient to be using on the skin. Um, it captures and deactivates um, aggressive free radicals. So like we talked about before, it's capturing those free radicals, it's deactivating them, it's giving them what they're needing so that they can function back at 100%. Um, it's preventing the effects of premature aging in the skin. It's uh, protecting against UV exposure, uh, particularly when combined with vitamin A. It works really nicely together with, uh, sorry, not vitamin A, vitamin E. Um, it promotes collagen formation by restoring the skin. It gives skin structure, support, improves the appearance of lines and wrinkles. Um, it's even been shown to improve the appearance of pigmentation in the skin. So it does have that slight sort of lightening, brightening effect. Um, sodium ascorbyl phosphate is a highly stable form of vitamin C um, that turns into ascorbic acid once it's um, activated within the skin. Um, it's optimal form of vitamin C due to its superior stability. So um, like I mentioned, a lot of other forms of vitamin C are actually stable, can't penetrate um, deeper into those layers of the skin and remain at a stable form. Um, it also does have an antimicrobial effect as well, which is a very neat um, to note about vitamin C. So let's move on now to our um, R-alpha lipoic acid. So again, another one in uh, the same category of um, anti-inflammation and antioxidants. So this one is a cellular energy, uh, involved in the cellular energy production. It's an antioxidant that is both water and fat soluble. And the great thing about that is it's able to travel every, anywhere within the skin. Um, our skin has, you know, the different layers of skin. We've got um, some water soluble and some oil soluble layers. So, with this ingredient, like I say, it's able to travel anywhere within the skin, which is just fantastic. It's very rare to get an ingredient that can do that. Um, it soothes inflammation, boosts collagen formation, um, assists in the detoxification as well. It's an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-aging, um, anti-acne. Um, and cell metabolizer as well. So it's very powerful antioxidant. Um, Anti-inflammatory properties are fantastic within this ingredient as well. Um, lipid and water soluble, as we mentioned. Um, it enters all areas of the cell, regenerates other antioxidants, which is fantastic too, um, that have or that ones that have already been taken um, on by free radicals. Uh, vitamin C and vitamin E, especially. Um, it closely mirrors what our body's natural procedure does. So a really, really great ingredient to have um, in that um, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory category for our skin. Next, we move on to our vitamin A. So again, this is one of our key ingredients. Um, generally, we will get the majority of our clients um, once we've got that hydration up, once we've got that barrier function um, forming well, majority of our clients we will recommend on a vitamin A and a vitamin C, um, just because of the benefit that they have in the skin. Um, vitamin A especially, 
But MNA has the capability of changing the cell's DNA, which is fantastic. Um, it's a cell communicating ingredient, reduces the appearance of pore size, uh, rejuvenates the skin, improves the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, helps with pigmentation and acne as well. So it has a cell communicating effect, um, able to aid in that cell-to-cell uh, -cell communication. Um, it, its functions are it's an antioxidant, um, it interrupts the free radical damage process of that, that free radical damage we talked about, and it increases collagen production in the skin. So it works to repair the skin. Um, its ability, the great thing about it is it has the ability to get into the cells um, and, and be stored within a cell. And we'll find with vitamin A, um, you know, if we use vitamin A too regularly, we'll start to get that um, slight sort of exfoliating or, you know, talcuming exfoliating effect on the surface of the skin. And that's an indication that our cell is, you know, jam-packed and full of that vitamin A that's stored in there. Um, and, and therefore it, it's got a little bit too much, so therefore it causes that slight exfoliation in the skin. So if you start to see that in the skin, that's when I would recommend your client, um, you know, just uses it less frequently. Generally with vitamin A or our AFIX, um, we would suggest for any client starting out on it to use it every third night. Um, and then go to every second day. You'd never need to use it every day in the skin um, because it has that ability to be stored within the cell. Um, as I said, it affects the DNA of the cell and returns it back to normal. When we're born, we have a natural store of fibroblasts. Um, and vitamin A, the reason I talk about fibroblasts is vitamin A um, are responsible for creating fibroblast cells and our fibroblast cells are what create um, new collagen and elastin in the skin. So really vital in that um, sort of skin healing process. Um, when we look at things like needling, um, when we look at things like our uh, plasma fibro fibroblast treatment, so our fantastic new Plamia device that we've got in, which is, is working to stimulate um, you know, fibroblast cells to create new collagen and therefore um, causes skin tightening, skin lifting, um, reduction of wrinkles. The results with this device are absolutely amazing and even better when we've got vitamin A um, used in the skin. Um, <clears throat> it gets into the extracellular matrix and produces that new collagen. So as I say, we are when we're born, we're born with a store of fibroblasts. Um, around our late sort of 20s, early to late 20s, um, this is where we start to run out of that, that store. And so we need to be using vitamin A um, to you know, uh, grow and to uh, develop new fibroblast cells within our skin because they are crucial for that uh, collagen production and that firmness and that structural support of our skin uh, to prevent that aging process in the skin and the health of the cells. Um, I won't get too much more into vitamin A um, as much as I love it. Um, I do just want to keep moving so that we're not running behind time. Um, so yeah, vitamin A, really important ingredient um, within the range. This just talks a little bit more about vitamin A, um, but we'll skip over that. We've covered most of the basics of it. Um, another ingredient in this category is our, our tepranone which works to fight skin aging by inhibiting dehydration and providing moisturization to the skin. So it works to reduce the appearance of lines and wrinkles, reduce the signs of um, age spots and pigmentation, uh, improves barrier function and uh, continues UV protection, protection. So it has that effect to um, contain that UV protection in the skin. Um, it's a protectant, anti-inflammatory, anti-aging, brightener and moisturiser. Um, it works on the origin of youth, so it targets the cell components to ensure the lifespan and youth of your cells. Protects skin cell um, telomeres, um, again to uh, prevent that, that shortening of the telomeres and therefore um, you know, leaving that more youthfulness in the skin to be prolonged. 
It also looks to um, enhance the benefits of topical antioxidants as well. So a really great ingredient for that. Um, next we'll look at, oops, next we'll look at um, nicetamide, nicetamide or our vitamin 3, but vitamin B3, which is involved in cellular respiration and lipid production in the skin. Um, so again, great for that hydration in the skin. Um, it's an antioxidant. It soothes inflammation while improving epidermal barrier. So remember we talked about the importance of a good barrier, a healthy barrier, a hydrated skin. This is a great ingredient to help aid in that. And you'll find in our Hydrofix, which is our um, hydrating uh, product, that this ingredient is also in there. So they work fantastically in conjunction with each other. It works to boost uh, collagen formation, smooth fine lines and wrinkles, and improve microcirculation in the skin. Um, it's a protectant, an anti-inflammatory, anti-aging, and a skin brightener. So it's an essential vitamin of the B group. Um, it's anti-inflammatory, antioxidant benefits are fantastic. Um, very useful for treating um, things like acne and rosacea, working to improve the, improve the appearance of aged, hyperpigmented skin and photodamaged skin. Um, Anti-wrinkle properties, reduces lines and wrinkles, uh, stimulates collagen and ceramide synthesis, um, and just really works on the function of um, the structural integrity of the skin as well, so keeping that really healthy. Um, it's useful for encouraging the production of natural emollients in the skin um, that help to maintain that hydration. Next we've got our vitamin E. So vitamin E again is another antioxidant with those antioxidant properties. It soothes inflammation while boosting collagen production. So let's look now at our peptide ingredients. So remember I mentioned before that peptides are working on that sort of anti-aging process. Um, peptides are the most powerful and interesting skincare ingredients um, out there. Their successfulness in um, you know, targeting the anti-aging, anti-wrinkle um, is just fantastic. They're really, really a crucial ingredient if you're wanting to target those signs of aging in the skin. Um, they're designed for collagen stimulation, hyaluronic acid synthesis, so, so um, building up that natural hyaluronic acid in the skin, anti-inflammatory, um, they work on that freezing expression lines, brightening, firming, um, the ultimate goal of wrinkle reduction and prevention. So as you can see, you know, these are the types of ingredients we want to fight that anti-aging. They're the building blocks of proteins. Um, essential ingredients for um, anti-aging skin care. They're a string of amino acids held together by bonds of nitrogen and carbon. They penetrate the epidermis and send signal cells informing them how to function. Um, there's many different types various, with various effects on the cellular function and on the, the skin itself. One of the most effective treatments in repairing damaged skin is by using um, these types of ingredients. Um, one thing to note with peptides, um, when you have a client who you're introducing into an anti-aging um, you know, skincare range or, or treatment range, they really need to be persistent. Um, we'll find with, with peptides, we won't get those um, visible results up front. It can take anywhere from sort of four to 12 weeks, but routine um, is really important making sure they're using it regularly. Um, and when they start to see those signs of aging um, being reduced in the skin, they need to be diligent and continue to use it. Um, otherwise, they're not going to get that same benefit and effect in the skin. So some of our peptide ingredients, we're going to look first at um, azuraline. So this uh, peptide works to target the wrinkle formation. It reduces the depth of expression lines. It has a freezing um, effect, sort of like a Botox effect um, on lines and wrinkles in the skin. 
It's very anti-aging. It inhibits the proteins that cause skin tension and muscle um, contraction that form the wrinkles. So we get that facial muscle tightening in the skin. Um, it works to relax facial tension, which may reduce in the appearance of superficial fine lines and wrinkles. So again, really neat um, clinical studies with this ingredient. Um, following 30 day treatment, a 25% uh, reduction of wrinkles was um, noted, which is fantastic. So the next one we're going to look at here is our Matrixyl V3000. So this is made up of two peptides. Uh, the first peptide has three amino acids, which work to stimulate collagen production and stimulate the proliferation of fibroblasts. So again, very important with those fibroblasts. Um, the, second, uh, the second peptide sorry, works to reduce inflammation in the skin. Um, so it's, they're working on restructuring, um, anti-inflammatory, and really plumping up the skin. They're in an anti-aging powerhouse. Um, they work to regulate cell activity, um, acting as messengers through in the skin um, for uh, repair, for restriction of the skin, um, working synergistically to restore, maintain, and keep that youthful appearance in the skin. Uh, a fibroblast is the most common type of cell found in the connective tissue. Uh, fibroblasts secrete collagen proteins that are used to maintain a structural framework of the skin. So remember we talked about fibroblasts and um, what they're doing in terms of creating that collagen and that structural support in the skin. Another one of our peptides is our Matrixyl Synth 6, which is a wrinkle filler. So all of these peptides work slightly differently as you can see. Um, this one is more of a wrinkle filler, so it smooths wrinkles from the inside by stimulating the production um, of macromolecules in the dermal epidermal junction that are needed for structure. So it's filling, filling that area, working on those lines and wrinkles and also anti-inflammatory. Um, it's a very powerful peptide. It boosts skin um, by rebuilding um, you know, the essentialness of the skin very essential uh, with that rebuilding capability that it has. Um, its network works to keep the skin really smooth um, and plump um, by, by you know, filling in that, that area where those lines and wrinkles sit. It also works to regulate cell activity. Um, and as you can see at the, at the, oh, oh yeah, at the bottom there, um, which might be the next page now. Show on this PowerPoint, sorry. Um, but collagen one um, was noted to be improved by 111% with these studies, and collagen three improved by 104%. So, as you can see, amazing results um, in terms of what it's doing in the skin. I'm sorry, I think I've added the wrong page to the slide there. <clears throat> Um, our next one we're going to look at is um, tetrapeptide 5. So again, another common one that we quite often um, hear about. Um, tetrapeptide 5 mimics the human body's own natural um, mechanism to produce collagen. So it has these growth factors. Um, it's anti-aging, anti-inflammatory, anti-wrinkle, and very firming. Um, a deep... A Deeply skin penetrating peptide, so it gets nice and deep into the layers of the skin. It's able to activate tissue growth that stimulates collagen synthesis in the skin. So again, a really fantastic ingredient. There are a few other peptides that we do use um, within the range, but I'm just going to leave it at those um, ones for now. And we're just going to look into our plant stem cells. Um, so there are two types of human stem cells. Um, we've got our embryonic and our adult. Our embryonic cells can turn into every type of cell in the body. Um, they can be used to regrow anything. Adult stem cells re 
work to repair and maintain healthy tissue. So plants have their own version of embryonic cell, uh, stem cells with the ability to turn into the various parts of the plant. So they contain lipids, proteins, and other important um, constituents that can complement and promote healthy skin, a uh, healthy human stem cells, um, as well as reduce premature cell aging. So we use um, our apple stem cell um, ingredient um, in this category. So this works to stimulate and protect human stem cells while reducing wrinkle depth and promoting regeneration of the skin. So it's a real revolutionary technology working to pr protect the stem cell. It's based on the stem cell of a rare Swiss apple. Um, hence why we've got the, the apple there and the picture of the apple and the name. Um, it ensures the longevity of the skin cell. It, it's age delaying and anti-wrinkle effect. Um, again, is really great in this ingredient. Very anti-aging ingredient. So results of uh, one study showed a significant and visible decrease in wrinkle depth for 100% of the subjects, which is fantastic. Um, next we'll look at our pigmentation um, inhibitors and brighteners. But before I go into that, I just want to check how everyone's going. Um, just let me know if you're all doing okay. Uh, please let me know if I'm going through things too fast. Um, if you're all happy and all good, if you could just put a little comment just to say yes, um, or please let me know if you feel I'm going too fast at all and I will slow down. Yes, all good. Lovely. Thank you. And please remember you're very welcome to ask any questions at any point. All right, so let's get into our um, pigmentation um, or prevention, uh, sorry, pigmentation inhibitors and brightening ingredients. Oops. So the first one we're going to look at is resveratrol. So this is an antioxidant that soothes um, inflammation and contains tyrosinase inhibiting properties. So remember when we looked back at um, that, that image with our melanocyte, with our dendrite, and that process of um, how pigmentation is formed in the skin. And the first thing was that, that UV stimulates um, the tyrosinase um, that process in the skin. So these ingredients are working to um, inhibit that response, basically. Sorry, one question. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Sorry, love. I, I probably am getting a little bit too in-depth, so that's just me because I'm so passionate about this amazing range. So absolutely, if there's anything that goes over your head um, or if I'm going too in-depth um, into the science side of things, then please just let me know. Um, this soothes the inflammation and contains tyrosinase inhibiting properties that work to brighten the skin. So yeah, like I said, uh, tyrosinase is, is preventing that first um, sort of chain reaction from starting in that process of pigmentation in the skin. Um, so this ingredient is a powerful antioxidant. It's found naturally in small amounts of wine. That's why our lovely picture over there. Um, and also a few other in, um, properties where it comes from. It's been found to have anti-inflammatory, antioxidant and skin whitening effects. It targets multiple skin whitening mechanisms. Its significant result uh, will be given in only two weeks, which is really cool. Reduces the intensity of skin pigmentation. It regulates key steps of um, basically working on um, that melanin process that we talked about, brightening the skin, giving that younger um, looking appearance to the skin. Next we have our uh, Skin White uh, MSH. So this works to improve and brighten the effects of the skin. Um, 
when used with classical brightening ingredients, things like kojic acid and bearberry, which um, are all found in our pigmentation or pigment fix uh, product that is working to prevent that pigmentation in the skin. Um, it inhibits skin cells from producing melanin and pigment um, to inhibit that melanin stimulating MSH which is that um, stimulating hormone, which we talked a little bit about in that pigmentation process, but don't worry too much about that. Just know that it's working to prevent that uh, chain reaction of pigmentation appearing in the skin. Um, it includes amino acids and lipid residue. Next, we've got our uh, kojic acid. Uh, so kojic acid inhibits melanin production, inhibiting again that tyrosinase. Um, gradual and continual skin brightening um, is achieved with this ingredient as it will work to dis discolour that pigmentation in the skin. Next we've got our bearberry, which again has got those skin brightening properties, antioxidant and antibacterial. This is extracted from the leaves of the bearberry shrub and again it works on lightening, uh, has that great lightening effect in the skin and that tyrosinase uh, preventer as well. Now we're going to look at our uh, skin moisturisers and hydrators. So as we know one of the main uh, products whenever we're talking about um, Sorry, ingredients when we're talking about hydration is our hyaluronic acid. So we talked a little bit about hydration and how hydration um, comes from hyaluronic acid. So that's why this ingredient is really important, um, you know, to include into your skincare regime um, for your clients. And remember, it's going to be that first um, line of treatment that we, we get our clients onto is our hyalur uh, hyaluronic acid ingredients, so our Hydrofix um, or our um, Hydrofix um, new a HA serum that we've, um, that's just come out um, this month, which is very exciting. Um, so this works to plump and lubricate and moisturize the skin. It prevents that trans epidermal water loss. So remember, think back again to our Glad Vat with those water droplets and how it's preventing that trans epidermal water loss. So hyaluronic acid also works to do that as well. Um, it's one of the most powerful humectants known. Um, it's found naturally in our skin, but again, as we age, it begins to decrease. Um, so really important to introduce it in with your skincare regime. Um, it further affects collagen formation and um, aids in that sort of process as well with the fibroblasts. Um, it's known to be really effective in promoting healing, fighting um, inflammation and um, conditions in the skin, also even for acne, excellent for anti-wrinkle effects, promotes growth of new cells um, after peeling treatment. One thing with um, our Hydrofix when we get to looking at the products. Um, remember the Hydrofix contains, so it's got this hyaluronic acid, it also has our um, niacinamide or our vitamin B3, um, which is at I think around 7%, I think it sits in, in the HA, um, in the Hydrofix Um, which on some skins can feel a little bit um, I don't know, active, not really irritating, but you, you know, you'll, you'll feel it a little bit on the skin. So while hyaluronic acid is really important in the skin, be really wary with putting Hydrofix on the skin um, after a peel. And that's why we wanted to create um, this new HA clinical complex um, serum to be designed to be used with your professional treatments because it doesn't have that higher level of niacinamide that can cause that sort of irritating feeling in the skin. Um, yeah, but after treatment, definitely send them home with this. If they've got a really sensitized skin, that's when I'd be looking at giving them the other HA serum. Um, also, we've got in our hydrating and moisturizing ingredients, our vitamin B5 or our panthenol, um, which is again another fantastic ingredient. This is also found in um, Hydrofix, which is one of my favorite products. 
Um, so yeah, great ingredient because it's got all of these wonderful ingredients. A great product because it's got all of these wonderful ingredients. So, so vitamin B5 um, is panthenol, which is an emollient that moisturizes and conditions the skin. It has anti-inflammatory uh, anti properties. Um, it's very calming on the skin. And you'll know panthenol from um, like the panthen, which you use a lot on babies who have nappy rash and things like that. And that's because of the benefit of that panthenol um, in the skin. So within, this, within our skincare range, obviously it's going to create that real um, lovely, soothing, conditioning, hydrating, anti-inflammatory um, benefit for the skin. It further moisturizes the stratum corneum, aids in uh, hydration, and again reducing that transepidermal water loss to keep that hydration um, in the skin. So that is a run through of um, some of our main ingredients. So now we sort of know a bit more about the different ingredients and the effects that they have on the skin. Let's now look into the Skincare RX home care products and we'll see you know, which of those ingredients we've talked about are in those products and then we look at why, you know, while they're in there and what sort of benefit they're going to be having on the skin. Um, so there's three main product categories. We've got our cleansers um, for the daily cleansing, weekly renewal treatments. We've got our um, specialised products, uh, which are have more active ingredients, um, you know, they're more targeted treatments basically for uh, different skin concerns. And then we've got our essentials, um, so things like our hydration, moisturizer, and sunscreen protection. So let's look first at our cleansers. Um, in Skincare X, we have three um, cleansers that we use. The first one we're going to talk about is our cleansing gel. Um, so our cleansing gel, this size comes in a 125ml. We do also do it in a professional bottle as well, um, which most of you probably will have in, in the salon for your facial treatments. Um, this is your skincare prescription, for uh, which is essential for daily cleansing and conditioning of the skin. Um, so this, in, in, within this cleanser, we have um, our active ingredients of lactic acid, vitamin C, vitamin E, and vitamin B5. So we can see we've got a really nice um, a, assortment of ingredients within there. So our lactic acid is obviously going to help in that, that cleansing of the skin, that um, removal of those dead skin cells in the stratum corneum. We've got our lovely vitamin C, which is so important for our skin, uh, for our cells, for our protection. Um, and we've got our lovely vitamin E and B5, which are going to, um, you know, soothe and calm the skin. Um, we just talked about our lovely panthenol with our B5 here. So we use this daily, morning and night. Um, and it's suitable for all skin types. I will say, though, with clients who are a bit dehydrated, if they do use this cleanser um, morning and night, they can find it, it may um, not make the condition worse, but it, it won't aid in um, boosting up that hydration. We really need to get that hydration better. Um, and because this does have a natural foaming effect in the skin, it can just, um, you know, because the dehydrated skin really needs something a little bit more uh, you know, creamy in its formulation. But yeah, it's a beautiful cleanser. So it comes out in a gel. Um, you can either pop a pump of it in your hand, apply it to the skin, um, massage around, and then add water and stuff to let it bubble up. Or you can um, you know, dampen down your hands and your skin, pop your pump of it on, and lather it up into a really nice foam and cleanse like a skin. It's a really nice cleanse. Our next cleanser is our cleansing scrub. Again, comes in the same size and in our professional as well. Um, the cleansing scrub is a potent boost of protective um, and exfoliating ingredients through the skin that feels clean, fresh, soft, and supple. So, in here, our active ingredients again are lactic acid, calicotin, vitamin C, vitamin E, and vitamin B5. Um, so, again, we're getting that nice exfoliating, nice soothing benefit, um, reducing our pores 
our vitamin C and E levels in the natural skin and our B5 condition in skin. So this has a nice granulated kind of coloring effect. Not too harsh or abrasive on the skin, but just gives this really nice kind of, you know, feeling of um, this crisp cream. Um, use, you can use this daily in the morning and night or once a week as a medium exfoliator. Um, generally, I would go more on that side of it. So really suitable for our um, oilier skin types. Um, oops, change. Um, and all skin types can be great for exfoliating them. So this can also be really good um, for clients who get hormone breakouts. Um, so I would recommend that they use this, um, you know, sort of that week prior to um, when their periods are due, and it will help them, um, you know, breaking down that cause that clogging in the follicle and then cause that um, acne and then take period to the morning skin. Sorry, I've just had a few people say it's really hard to hear me. Can you hear me now? Is it any better? A little still hard to hear. It's just, I'm just gonna. Has, is there any better? Okay, I'll, I'll carry on. If it's still hard to hear me, then please let me know. Going quiet sometimes. Okay, thank you. Please just keep me updated. Um, if there's anything you didn't hear me say about the uh, products, please just let me know. But yeah, basically this one is designed to give that exfoliating effect on the skin. Cool. Next we've got our uh, cleansing lotion. So this is our enzyme cleanser. Um, it has a potent boost of protective and soothing ingredients, including enzymes. So remember we talked about our enzymes at the beginning um, and our ingredients, looking at you know, providing that a more gentle but very effective exfoliating approach to the skin. Uh, leaves skin feeling really clean, fresh, soft and supple. Um, active ingredients within this, we have our bacillus ferment that we talked about, we have our pineapple extract, and we have our fermented papaya extract. So as you can see, a lovely array of enzymes in there to create that beautiful exfoliation. Um, again, this is a really nice product for um, you know, clients who can get a little bit of that hormonal breakout. Um, again, use it a little bit more regularly, uh, the sort of that week prior to when your period is due just to help to, to keep that area clear and to prevent that kind of build up from occurring and therefore resulting in um, breakouts in the skin. Also really nice for clients who, um, like I said before, are a little bit more dehydrated, <clears throat> then this is what I would recommend them on. Um, probably not morning and night, um, but maybe, you know, use the cleansing gel in the morning and use this at night or vice versa. Um, I'd probably go more this at night though. Great for people who are a bit more sensitive and prefer more of the, the feeling of a lotion on the skin. Um, then we also have our enzyme fix. So this is like a skin renewal mask. So this has got those enzyme ingredients within there. And this is like a leave-on exfoliating treatment. Really beautiful to do within a facial. Um, leave it on for about 10 minutes. Um, you can keep your steamer on your skin if you use a steamer in your salon. Um, while this is on as it will keep those enzyme, enzymes activated. Otherwise you can just um, you know, get your fingertips and massage this around on the skin. So again it contains that bacillus ferment which is the gentle exfoliator working to smooth the, smooth the skin. We've got our pineapple extract, our papaya, our aloe vera, um, so really nice array of ingredients. So massaging it into the skin, um, you know, you will get a wee feeling of warmth um, in the skin and you can use it once a week as a home care product 
or you can do it professionally in your treatment. We do also sell this in a professional size. It's great for all skin types, particularly, particularly sensitive skins who don't want a manual exfoliant. Then we go to our more specialised products. So we've got our C fix. So remember we talked about um, the importance of vitamin C in the skin um, and what it does in the skin. So with our C fix, um, our C fix is um, designed in a powder. So this is made up of 98% uh, vitamin C with 2% pearl powder. So it's in a powder formation. So when you go to use vitamin C, you can mix it in with one of your other serums that you use in the daytime. Remember, vitamin C um, does have that, that slight um, protective quality in terms of the tyrosinase inhibitor, so definitely better to use it in the daytime. Um, and pearl powder is a lovely antioxidant in the skin. So it contains vitamin C in its purest form. Remember, we talked about the type of vitamin C um, with our sodium ascorbyl phosphate, which is the most, um, you know, it's a stable form of vitamin C. It penetrates really nicely into the skin um, and, you know, works really effectively. It's an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-aging, anti-acne and brightening as well. And that pearl powder works to nourish and, reju and rejuvenate the skin. So with this, the way that it's formulated, as I say, it's a 98% vitamin C. So when you look at other brands that have vitamin C, they may do like a 10% vitamin C and a 20% vitamin C. It's not the strength of the vitamin C, it's just how much vitamin C in terms of quantity is within that mix. So ours quantity is a 98% vitamin C. And we've done it that way so that you can be more in control of how much vitamin C you are applying onto your client's skin. For instance, if you're um, mixing it with another serum, you do one pump of your serum and you cover one uh, third of it uh, with, with the C-Fix powder. So essentially, you, 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 you're then generating a 30% vitamin C uh, for them to apply onto the skin. Um, also in the form that it's in, it's stable, it's not going to oxidize, um, you know, it, it's going to penetrate nicely um, into the skin that way. So it's a really neat little product. Um, to use and very, very effective in terms of um, the benefits it gives in the skin. It's recommended for all skin types, especially people who are concerned with um, wanting protection, rejuvenation, um, really effective for anti-aging and anti-acne, and also that anti-pigmentation. Um, we've got our Resurfix, which again is another type of sort of exfoliating ingredient. Um, it's a, a complex that basically works to refine the skin. It's got a potent boost of resurfacing ingredients, working to improve the appearance of rough and uneven skin tone. Helps with block pores, fine lines and wrinkles. So its active ingredients are our lactic acid, kojic acid, salicylic acid and hyaluronic acid. So a really nice combination of ingredients that are going to um, rejuvenate and resurface the skin, but we still have that nice um, hyaluronic acid in there um, as well to aid, to aid in the hydration of the skin. Um, kojic acid also works to brighten the skin as well, so a really nice ingredient for that. So with this one again, we would use it more at night time. Works to stimulate that cell renewal um, that we talked about, speeding up that process of the cellular turnover. Um, recommended for all skin types, especially people who are concerned with resurfacing and renewal of the skin. We've got our Age Fix. Um, so Age Fix is designed obviously for people wanting more youthful um, skin. They're wanting to target those signs of aging in the skin. It's a multi-peptide stem cell complex that delivers a potent boost of rejuvenating ingredients, so fantastic ingredients in here. As you can see in our ingredient list, we've got that lovely apple stem cell, which we know is really important for the, for the um, stem cells. Um, Azureline, Matrixyl 3000, Matrixyl, Matrixyl 6, um, Tetrapeptide 5, Glycan Booster Peptides. We've got all those fantastic peptides that we talked about when we're looking at our ingredients. So targeting um, anti-aging in those different ways by freezing, by filling, by plumping, 
um, by being like Botox and muscle relaxants. We've got all of that jam packed into this amazing product. Um, it's working to repair the framework of the skin and reduce inflammation as well. So you can use this one daily in the morning and age fix works really nicely um, in conjunction with our C-Fix. So if we're talking about one of those products that we're going to mix our C-Fix powder into, age fix is beautiful. And we've got our radical fix. The radical fix is more for um, skins that need regeneration. Uh, this is uh, supercharged with antioxidants. Um, it's an antioxidant infusion for the skin. So you can use this like a mask. Um, at home, clients can put you know, a little bit more of it on the skin and leave it on as a mask. Um, it's fantastic for that antioxidant benefit in the skin. It's got our vitamin C, our R, alpha lipoic acid, our vitamin E, and our hyaluronic acid. So a lovely array of ingredients in there. I'm really working to restore, give better structure, provide that, anti that crucial antioxidant um, to the skin to fight those free radicals. Uh, prevent any damage, soothe inflammation, boost collagen inflammation, protect and soothe, and obviously we've got our hydration with our hyaluronic acid. Um, this will, can be used every night um, over the prescribed skincare context. Um, you can use this in conjunction with if you did your AFIX, so um, you know every second night you can do it that way. AFIX is, um, and we'll talk about that when we get to AFIX, but AFIX is better to be used um, just on its own. Whereas the other serums, you can sort of layer them up. Pigment fix. So pigment fix, as it says in the name, is working to um, prevent pigment. So this has got all of those wonderful tyrosinase inhibitors. It's got our skin white MSH. It's got our resveratrol, our kojic acid, vitamin C, and bear berry. So all of those wonderful um, ingredients to really target that pigmentation, prevent that um, melanogenesis from occurring in the skin when you're exposed to the UV rays. Um, it works to inhibit, to brighten, um, so any pigmentation you have in the skin, this will also actually aid in brightening that and reducing its appearance, as well as giving further protection in the skin. Um, definitely use this one, it says morning or night, I don't know why we'd use it at night, because it's got the tyrosinase inhibitors in, I would use it in the day. So when you are um, outside, you know, you're extra protect, protected um, from that pigmentation forming in the skin. This one too, you can um, mix in with your sea powder or your um, age fix as well in the, in the daytime. Then we've got our lovely Hydrofix. Um, so Hydrofix ingredients, as we talked about earlier on, we've got our hyaluronic acid, our vitamin B3, the niacinamide, and our vitamin B5, our panthenol. So this is working to repair that skin's barrier, that acid mantle layer, the function of the skin, um, bring hydration back. Remember, it's important for the enzymes that are between our cells. It's important for um, you know, waste to go between cells for nutrition to travel between cells. So really important. This is the, the first ingredient, the first product that I would get my clients on. So it will soothe inflammation, improve the functional and structural, structural strength of the skin while supporting the skin barrier. Um, it re will reduce inflammation and irritation. Really good as well for um, your clients who suffer with redness in the skin and um, this is really nice for aiding in that and great for rosacea and acne too so this one you can use either morning or night on clean skin um, you can again use it in conjunction with other products with this I would suggest um, you know if you cleanse your skin put your hydrofix on just leave it for sort of five or so minutes to sort of sink into the skin before layering up your other products. Um, so once you get out of the shower, pop your Hydrofix on, um, get yourself dry off and dress, do your hair if you like, and then pop on your other products just to give it that bit of time um, you know, to absorb into the skin. Um, AFIX. So we've again talked a little bit about AFIX, but AFIX is for um, our renewal, so it's our renewal complex. Um, 
working to clear blockages in the skin, minimize the appearance of lines, um, age and helping with um, enlarged pores, photo damage, acne, and the appearance of aging. Remember it's crucial for that um, fibroblast, stimulating the fibroblast, create a turning, changing a cell into a fibroblast and therefore stimulating um, the growth of new collagen. Um, it's a really vital ingredient in a product. Remember this is something we work up to having about 90% of our clients on ASIC, no matter what the condition, but not until their skin is hydrated and their barrier is um, you know, at, at top functioning capacity. If this is introduced too early in a dehydrated skin, um, then you know, it, don't, it, it will feel quite irritating and, and not give the effect that we want. Um, aids in that cell communicating, um, cell to cell signaling, um, again, really important in healing process. So if you're doing things like your needling or your linear plasma treatments, um, um, a very important ingredient to be using. Um, it soothes and softens the skin. Use it at night, um, often on alternative days. Remember, we start this every third day and then go to every second day for our clients. We never use it every night. Um, and best to just use this on its own. So no other serums with it, um, no moisturizers or anything. And you can do those on the alternative night. We've got our acne fix, which is our prescription for um, obviously breakouts and blemishes. Um, this is more of a spot treatment. Um, and ideally it's designed to be used um, when you first initially feel a spot coming up on the skin. Um, you know, when, you, when it's red, it's searing, um, sore underneath the skin, that's when acne fix works the best. It's got antioxidant, anti-inflammatory activity uh, benefits. Um, it works to improve acne, scarring, and uneven skin tone. It's got your vitamin E that will soothe and moisturize, as well as your vitamin C, alpha lipoic, um, vitamin B3 as well. Really great product for that. Now with acne, um, if your client had a really um, inflamed you know, acne spot, like I say, this is more uh, preventer to use initially. Um, once it's quite inflamed and it's um, puffy and, it, and it's you know, looking quite angry, what I would actually recommend is then using the Ingrowfix, which is, which is our product designed to be used for ingrowing hairs, but it has an amazing benefit for acne. Obviously, it's treating the same thing. It's working to um, unclog, unclog to get oxygen in um, so that that pee acne is not you know blocked up and thriving and growing and getting inflamed and angry um, so yeah that's what I would recommend in terms of if you're treating acne. Then we've got our essentials so we've got our moisturizing products and we do two um, different moisturizers in the moisture fix range we've got our fortifying cream the other one is our lotion. So our cream is more designed for obviously people that want a bit more um, nourishment in the skin. This has got your shea butter and that's going to give that more nourishing effect. Um, it's got tepanone, vitamin C, r alpha lipoic acid, shea butter and hyaluronic acid. Um, it's a potent boost of strengthening ingredients designed to enhance the healthy appearance of lipid dry skin types. It contains that tepanone to ensure youthful cells and enhance their lifespan. Protects, brightens and moisturizes. Um, it's got those lovely vitamins in there to protect and give that antioxidant effect. Um, shea butter, like I mentioned, for moisturizing and soothing and hyaluronic acid for hydrating and plumping skin. So this can be used morning or night, um, normal to dry skins. Um, or people who just need a little bit more or like something a little bit heavier. Otherwise, we've got our fortifying lotion. Um, so same ingredients in there. The only thing is it doesn't have is the shea butter. So it's got our um, tepanone, our vitamin C, our alpha lipoic, our hyaluronic, uh, doing all those same um, properties that we talked about before. But it's just more of a lightweight, uh, hence why it's a lotion, not a cream. 
um, eye fix. This is an amazing eye cream. Um, of all the eye creams I've ever used, this is definitely the one that I've noticed the best results with um, in terms of, you know, a benefit for the eye area. And you can see why. I mean, it's jam-packed with those wonderful peptides. It's got Azureline, it's got Matrixyl 3000, Matrixyl X6, Resveratrol, Vitamin C, R, Alpha Lipoic Acid, and Hyaluronic Acid. So why would you want to use another eye cream? Like, this is just it. It's got everything. It's amazing. Also really nice for um, the upper lip and even for clients who suffer from really dry lips. Um, you know, pop some of the eye fix on the, onto, onto their lips. Um, because of the formulation of um, an eye cream, having a, a, a different molecular weight and molecular structure, it, you know, it can get into those finer areas like around the eyes and the, and the lip area. Um, so a really nice treatment for the lip um, if needed. Um, contains all the benefits of the most potent skincare antioxidant and anti-inflammatory ingredients, combined with the accelerated anti-aging benefits of the most intense skincare peptides. Also provides the essential moisturization and hyaluronic acid for that hydration and shea butter. So applying around the eye area, always remember to re, um, show your clients how to apply an eye cream. It's amazing how many clients will apply it right up under the eye and over the eyelids. We just want to go around that um, occipital bone around the eye that you can feel underneath the eye um, and also just sort of under the brow in that same orbital bone. The warmth in the skin will naturally cause the product to seep in so it will treat the skin um, you know, closer into the eye. But if we go slapping it everywhere around the eye, that's where we're going to get things like mini-air occurring. Um, so, you know, don't use too much and don't pop it right underneath the eye. And next we've got our Sunfix. So again, this is another one of my favourite products. Um, Sunfix is a beautiful um, sun protection. Sorry, I just have a question here. So, great question, no silly question. Um, no questions are silly, so ask away. Um, when I talk about the eye fix, it is good for the upper lip most definitely. So clients with smoker lines um, or just general lines above the eyes, perfect for that. But it is also great for um, the lips themselves um, in terms of helping with that dryness. If that answers your question. <laughs> um, so we'll go back to our sun fix. And thank you for asking questions. Um, so Sunfix is obviously our skincare prescription designed to screen skin from the effects of sun exposure. So Sunfix is a physical block. As you can see in the ingredients here, it's got natural zinc. It's got um, a range of beautiful natural um, SPF ingredients in there. So we've got organic aloe vera, we've got shea butter, lavender, cinnamon essential oil. Um, the cinnamon is one of the ingredients that you will smell in this product. It smells absolutely beautiful and even men really love it. It's a really beautiful sunscreen um, for men and for babies because there's no nasties in it. It's um, a product that we have specifically sourced because we wanted it to be 100% organic. Um, so it's fantastic for our skins that are sensitive, skins that are um, you know, young babies. Um, everyone can benefit from Sunfix. Um, yeah, a whole wide range of, of natural SPF factors um, and ingredients. So organic coconut oil, jojoba, um, lavender and chamomile, rose hip. So as you can see, just a beautiful array of ingredients in there. Um, apply this daily after your um, skincare regime. You can um, apply your moisture fix, either your lotion or your cream and your sun fix over the top. Um, because this does have natural zinc in it, it, it is quite white when applied to the skin, but it does blend in really beautifully. It's not like a lot of those um, sunscreens on the market that you know, are hideous to try and rub that whiteness into the skin. If you do find it is um, more thicker than you're liking, you can um, mix it in with a little bit of your um, moisture fix cream or lotion, just to give a little bit more slip. Uh, but I don't find any problem. You know, my daughter has 
very reactive skin with um, sunscreens and she uses the sunny skin and it's beautiful it goes on really nicely um, and you know at least I know that she's protected and she's you know exposed to any nasty ingredients in the sunscreen And um, this is just continued. Um, Sunfix is designed to screen from the harmful effects of sun exposure, UVA, UVB, um, accelerated aging effects from sun exposure, the drying and dehydrating effects of sun exposure um, in the environment of the sun, um, sensitizing and irritating. So again, like I talked about, all those lovely natural organic ingredients um, are, are great on more of a sensitized skin. This just breaks down a little bit more about the different ingredients in there. Um, zinc is the closest to a, to a natural sunblock. It's a broad spectrum, so it's protecting us completely. Um, a, a, able to reflect and absorb UVA and UVB, which is great. Um, known, no known and adverse reactions and is gentle enough to be used on babies. Transparent, um, the whitening blends in really easily. Um, soothing effect on the skin, no irritation, um, it has an antimicrobial property too, which is great. Uh, aloe vera, which we know is obviously lovely and anti-inflammatory, it aids in that protective layer in the skin, moisturising the skin. Um, we've got our natural SP properties in there and our regeneration of our moisturising and hydrating. Um, as well with the range of ingredients, we've got um, natural anti-inflammatories, moisturising, softening, protecting, um, natural sunscreen properties within these ingredients, containers vitamin E, some of the ingredients contain vitamin E, the anti-aging, soothing, softening, um, yeah, just an all-round amazing sunscreen. This will fly off the shelf um, in summertime and even not in summertime because as we always need, know, we need to educate our clients about um, any time they're outdoors protecting from the sun. It doesn't matter if it's cloudy, it doesn't matter if it's summer, winter, autumn, spring, they need to have protection, especially if they're coming to you for um, advanced treatment. Crucial that they have some SPF in their skin. Cool, so that brings us the, to the end of our um, sort of main skincare RX ingredients. Um, we're now looking at the professional treatment products. Um, so there's four parts to these. We've got our, uh, sorry, this is part four of our manual. We've got our um, infuser bit, which is our infusion and our concentrates we can infuse with it. We've got Ingrofix, which is for our ingrown hairs, which I talked about, as well as being a really neat treatment for acne. And we've got our Soothe Fix, which is our post-treatment soothing gel. So let's just go through these ones. Any questions before I jump into this next stage? Cool. So let's start with our Infuser Fix. Now I just had a, a little pop up on my computer to say that my battery is running low and I realised I haven't brought my cord into it, so that's really great. Um, so hopefully we'll get through this quickly. Um, if if um, my computer dies, I do apologise and I will um, jump on another one and um, touch base with you there. <laughs> um, so with our infuse effects, so we've got our infuse effects. Um, which is a highly versatile product. Um, this can be used as a massage medium, um, it can be used as a mask. Um, it, it is designed to have our um, infusions uh, blended in with it. So these little infuser fix um, that you can see in the picture here, we infuse, uh, blend a couple of those in with our um, infuser fix, and that's designed to be the skin treatment. Um, so our different ones, we've got our protective antioxidant concentrate, 
um, which has our liquid vitamin C. It's working to lighten, to give superior absorption, protect against DNA cell damage, promote collagen synthesis, prevent um, lipid, you know, losing our hydration in our lipids from the skin, um, works as an antioxidant, and is heat stable. So it's got that anti-aging property due to its potent antioxidant properties that target the skin. Um, it does also have our um, algae ex extract in there as well, which is very powerful for moisturizing the skin and soothing properties for anti-wrinkle, um, promotes skin cell, um, promotes new skin cell after thinning and supports wound healing. So beautiful if you've done you know, a range of um, advanced treatments, um, it's good to come back later and get um, this infusion in the skin. We've also got our rebuilding peptide concentrate, which as you can see there already has all of those lovely peptides in there. So working for anti-aging, um, powerful peptides to rebuild, um, working to reduce the signs of aging in the skin, um, plump and hydrate the skin, um, pr again promotes new skin cells after repairing and supporting wound healing. We've got our skin renewal concentrate. So this has our vitamin A, this has our algae in there again as well. Um, so we're working to um, regenerate the skin, um, improve the appearance of the skin, of aged skin or acneic skin. Uh, really great for moisturizing, giving softening and smoothing effects to the skin. It's anti-wrinkle effects again, um, and again works to um, promote new skin cells after healing and supporting the wound healing too. So great for clients who are concerned with um, aging or acne from a textural perspective. So the, the texture of their skin is their concern, then this is what we would go to. We've got our recovery, um, which we can see has our beta glucan in there. Great to protect and repair the skin. Um, also, we've got our other ingredients that really work to increase the energy level of the skin cells. Um, so our cells are functioning much better and more effectively. Um, it aids in um, improving dehydration, age spots, barrier function, so fantastic for that. Really recovering the skin. So the name of the concentrate sort of tells you basically what we're doing. Um, great for those with sensitive and or reactive skin that need repair and still want the benefit of anti-aging without more stimulating ingredients. We've got our restorative concentrate. So we can see this has got our ceramide complex in there, um, which is great for um, that consistency of multi, um, helping with the ceramides in the skin without being too uh, technical again. Um, really was restoring the skin's barrier, um, aiding in um, helping with that stratum corneum layer and the acid mantle layer. Um, it's got anti-aging properties and um, regeneration properties. Um, it's also working to soothe, um, anti-wrinkle, promote scale, the new skin cell after healing and supports wound healing again. Great for very dry skins that need replenishment or have been affected by the elements. So this just goes through, um, I've just put this page in here because we get a lot of people asking how to use the infuse effects. So generally we do sort of two pumps of infuse effects and two pumps of the serum. Um, approximately out of um, one of the concentrate syringes, you'll get around 33 treatments. Um, so yeah, fantastic when you break down the cost of them, um, you know, they are really beneficial. And you can even add that as an add-on um, to any treatment that you do. We've got our Ingrow Fix, which is our salicylic acid, our tea tree oil, our aloe vera and our papaya extracts. So already you can see it's got that slight exfoliating benefit, it's going to be soothing. Tea tree is obviously anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, so helping with, um, you know, releasing and removing that ingrown hair, and also acne when it's at that real pustule angry stage. Um, salicylic acid obviously going to work to unclog the pores, um, get that oxygen in there, and remove that unblocking that we talked about when we looked at our acne. 
um, our Sudafax is our post treatment soothing gel. This is also fantastic for sunburn. Um, if you have any clients with sunburn, um, my brother and I got really badly sunburned one year and I just gave him a bottle of this. Um, he was sort of in that blistering phase. Put this on and it was incredible how fast it worked on soothing um, the skin, repairing, reducing you know, the blister and that real inflammation and angriness um, caused by that. So it's an amazing product. Um, it's formulated with a blend of certified organic herbal extracts. It's got aloe vera in there. Um, so it's more of that gel-based consistency and will feel nice and cooling um, on the surface of the skin. So your aloe vera, your green tea, um, your comfrey root, your calendula and your cucumber. So already you can see very soothing, calming, anti-inflammatory, lovely ingredients for the skin there. And then we've got our soothe fix. Um, which also contains, sorry, we talked about suffix, which also contains our vitamin B5, vitamin E, our sage, and our prawn manta key. So again, really lovely ingredients for aiding in that um, soothing of the skin and repairing of the skin. Remember that B5 is that panthenol um, that we know from things like the panthen, so great for that healing, restoring, soothing, calming. Lovely, so that brings us to the end of um, our webinar training today and what we've gone through. Um, like I say, if you're more interested in finding out